right, what's going on, boys and girls? So, I usually don't do hardware. I'm not a hardware guy as far as reviewing hardware. Well, I was given something. And uniquely enough, I used it and decided to do a video on it. I was given a weird thing. It's called a Mac Pro with MacBook Pro with like these weird things called ports. And like yeah, like I, I don't know what these are on a Mac. Um, there's this weird thing on the back that allows you to upgrade and replace things. Uh, all joking aside, that is a two, early 2008 MacBook Pro 15.4 inch. Uh, it's a 2.4 dual Intel dual core, uh, an 8600, NVIDIA 8600 uh, with 256 megs of RAM. VRAM, uh, four gigs of DDR2, six six seven, and I think it's two hundred and two hundred gigs, seventy two hundred hard drive, give or take. I wanted to see if this was usable. I got this for free, so let, let's talk about whether or not it's usable with the current version that is supported on that particular machine that is currently still supported for Mac OS, which is a Capitan. And now this is officially supported. You can install Mojave on this. I have not. I wanted to use it in its proper configuration. Uh, I ran Opera with multiple tabs open. I had Tweet, I believe it's TweetIn, that I used as my Twitter client. Uh, I used, I had iMovie open that I was editing a video on. I had Telegram open and Finder and a few other smaller apps. And the funny thing is, you can still run it. It still works. Everything was fluid for the most part once it was loaded. Now, this is a more of a hard drive thing um, and limited RAM. Now, you can upgrade to 6 gigs, but I'm not dropping $50 for a 4 gig stick of RAM. Screw that. Um, overall, though, um, this machine is very usable. Uh, just from in its stock configuration as is right now. The caveat, and this is where the caveat comes in. Would I spend money on this? It depends. It depends on what you're looking for for a machine. If you are a Linux user, as an example, that is just looking for hardware, you can get these for like $100, $150. The one thing I will say... I have no problem with the build quality. Um, especially those time frames. I think they look better than the current MacBooks. I think they look better than the unibody design. As far as whether or not I would buy it specifically for Mac OS, no. Because while it's El Capitan is still officially supported, it's more of a question of how long before it drops off. Because the one thing I found is a lot of applications are 10.12, 10.13, Oh, Techno Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave. Now, you can get Mojave to run on this, but it's unofficially supported. So you're on your own. So you break this, and you're screwed. Have fun. Um, but if you're getting this for build quality or a Linux machine or even a Windows 10, like a Windows 10 machine, this is perfectly usable. Um, it's not going to be the fastest blazing thing in the world, but as a, a for what it is and the price that you're going to pay... I would say on those caveats, yeah, you can probably get away with running Windows 10 or Linux on this. Mac OS, if that's what you're buying it specifically for, if you're going to spend more than probably 100 bucks on it, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're spending under 100 with the 4 gigs of RAM and everything works, and you want a tinkering machine for Mac OS, while you can get unofficial supported versions of it, then yeah, uh, I would recommend it in, in that light. But as a general like Mac OS experience machine, no, nah, because you don't know how long the support's going to be there for. And that's really where the catch-22 is. You get it and want to experience Mac OS while it's supported, and then go the unofficial route, which I'm going to be honest is probably what I'm going to do. Um, or... Do you want to get something newer? Now, personally, I would probably if you want to experience macOS, 
I would say either get like one of the 2009 Mac, like the unibody MacBooks, um, the, the aluminum, aluminum, uh, 2009 MacBooks. Um, you're gonna have better processors. You can get more RAM for them, etc. Um, they're just better machines as far as they don't have the failure rates that this one does with 8600. That is my take on it. If you're going for Mac OS specifically, this is not probably the best machine to get. If you are looking for build quality, it's a you know, Linux or Windows machine, and you have reasonable expectations, I don't see why not. So you guys know what to do. Am I right? Am I wrong? Well, that's up to you. Rate it, subscribe. Peace out.